Now, one of the most important skills to develop is your mental awareness of the current situation. And that means recognizing aspects of the situation beyond just what is in front of your face and what is, like, academically the, the, the you know. Let's say uh, the opponent does something that's plus two and he's relatively close to you, and he does something else that's plus two and relatively close to you. Like, it's two separate moves that result in borderline the same situation. It's important to recognize them as different, even if mathematically they are almost identical. I'm talking about noticing patterns and being aware of, like, your resources and stuff. In general, I think the best way to be mentally aware of your resources is in two parts. You should study your resource gain over a bunch of your different matches through your replays. See when you happen to get trigger, see how many hits it takes for you to build a bar of V-trigger or, or, or meter uh, most of the time. And that way, while you're playing, you'll have a better sense of, like, uh... Uh, you'll have a better sense of, you know, when you have trigger ready to go as as soon as your health gets to around the right level rather than actually having to look at the gauge each match, you know? You'll have a sense of how matches tend to flow and play out and what resources you'll have at a certain point. Having an idea of how quickly you build meter in certain situations will give you a better idea of how to spend it and when to examine how much you have available right now. When you land certain attacks or combos or you get juggle comboed by the enemy, you can take that opportunity when you can't do anything to, uh, 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 glance down at the resources. You know, when you start a fight, you want to be sure that you iron out into your memory which side you start on so you don't get confused and look at the wrong gauges. <laughs> you don't want to accidentally look at uh, the opponent's meter. That's something that's very easy for you to train because you can just play some matches where all you do, all you think about is like looking at the gauges when you have the opportunity. You can slam those skills into your brain pretty quickly so long as you go for it and do it, you know? It's not quite as easy to train yourself to recognize patterns in all situations and not just autopilot your, your actions. This is also a mental stack issue, but to keep your wits about you, you want to practice consciously thinking about your exact current situation and measuring the opponent. Think of your opponent like a creature that you're studying in a science experiment. You want to create the same given stimuli and then document a clear response in your, in your mind. Sure. You can play in such a way that you just do your thing, and if the opponent does something a bunch of times, you'll eventually start to notice it, but that's inherently slower. You are more likely to miss patterns you could have found otherwise, and in all things, it's just better to be proactive in your mental game. To better keep track of things, practice clearly memorizing actions the opponent takes in very, very specific situations and mentally count the number of times they happen, and this also includes inaction. If you're in neutral, footsie's range, and, uh, you know... There is an extended period of inaction. Be sure to mentally document that as well. What movement do they do, if any? Uh, what do they take a, a, any given set of, let's say, three seconds of uh, uh, passing of the opponent choosing to do nothing for that time, just blocking or maybe walking backwards? This is a good way to train yourself and your long-term ability to keep track of the bigger picture when studying your opponent. Beyond that, we have reviewing your matches while tracking the big picture. I know I've already basically brought up this in a, in the a, uh, section on, on, on watching over your, your um, replays, uh, reviewing your replays, but it affects how you notice trends and recognize what you need to do differently while you're playing. You need to track your defense uh, and offense uh, throughout a match. Not just specific situations you messed up or could have done differently, or your general neutral choices or how you might have ended up in a bad spot. One of the easiest things for new players to overlook is what could have been. You know, it's easy to not see that the biggest factor in your defeat is was less about what did happen and more about what could have happened instead. If you study your losses and only look for when you you're, you're, you lost neutral or you lost on defense or you guessed wrong or something or you made some mistake, you don't see the places where you could have gotten significantly more reward by taking an opportunity to be more aggressive or get more hits, uh, more obvious things than missed punishes or anything. If you find a trend of not opening up the opponent on offense, if you go to the same well too many times in the same situation, uh, if you always, like, say the opponent, like a Honda player, does like a light headbutt on block, and he's minus four, and you always just take your turn when the opponent is, puts themselves in a negative position, instead of ever using the term to move in and pressure and throw or something like that, those are all missed opportunities, missed chances most of the time. This is important to the next section on reading the opponent and how to improve your guesswork, but it also affects your mental state and how you internally document what happens to inform yourself for how you should be adjusting. If you, say, go for a throw and it gets teched, you don't you really, like, don't look at that as if you lost the situation. It can be easy for players to miss the bigger picture and only remember failure rather than success. They'll think, oh, when I did this, it didn't work, so I just won't do that next time or I'll do something different. But then it keeps on going. 
they keep trying the same thing over and over. Like, oh, go for a shimmy over and over when the opponent is rarely ever teching. Because in their minds, they've already selected, oh, when I, t when I do the throw, it gets teched. Because you he teched maybe one or two or three throws early on, and that stuck out in your brain as like, oh, situations I failed. Or another common situation, a player being too reliant on baiting DPs, or rather too scared of reversals. A lot of weaker players, if they get hit by one or two EX reversals, it just sticks out in their mind so much that they, you start trying to bait them more often than you actually take your turn on offense. Your brain is lying to you about the data. Your brain keeps telling you that the statistics are more unbalanced than they are, that you need to wait for a DP because it's happened before and you're terrified of it coming, but in reality, you're making a hasty assumption about the patterns of your opponent just based on a few minor instances of incorrect guessing. And if you really just count exactly how many times you were rewarded for trying to bait a DP versus the amount of times you sabotage yourself by not taking your offense, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see it in the replays, clear as day. Failures tend to stick out more in your mind than successes. This is just how psychology works. They're more memorable during a match. You have to be sure to remember what you were rewarded for doing and be sure to keep track of the actual frequency of certain decisions being made and not just a gut feeling you have which will usually be tainted by psychological mistakes such as sunk cost fallacies your brain will be you know privy to fear overriding actual risk reward logic that kind of stuff these are all things that you need to work on being able to ignore your brain will always 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 load up its next mental stack based on the situation that it's observing that's what it's trained to do uh, uh, sensory stimulation you know if the opponent seems like they anti-air everything, it's probably just because they're currently in a mental stack that lets them do that. Forcibly put them in a new mental stack. If you're the one applying pressure, let's say um, let's say Laura suddenly lands a V-Skill 1 overhead from like kind of far away, from downtown, and it hits. There's a decent chance that the opponent has been conditioned by you or maybe other lores they played that his mental stack will shift to trying to get away from this fucking psycho Laura player, you know? There's a decent chance that the new mental stack he's loading up upon this getting hit by this overhead won't be one in which he's ready to anti-air you. There are just mo certain actions you can take where an opponent will frequently, uh, instinctively challenge you more often and some situations where they'll be more patient. Not necessarily because it's mathematically logical for the them to take those actions in those situations, but it's just how their brains have been conditioned over time to respond to those particular situations. Always measure by the situation, not by the math, not by the data. When you're trying to understand someone's mentality and how to read them, watch the situation and what it makes them do. And in a similar sense, observe your own mental stacks you load up instinctively in each situation. Block this button or this thing happens. Where they create, might create weaknesses or gaps in your play and then try to fix them. 